All right, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is John and today I'm gonna to be talking about getting my first design job. Okay, first off, design is a super competitive industry. There's a lot of really talented people out there and you really need to do pretty much whatever you can to set yourself apart. Whether it's your ability to communicate your design process, your ability to communicate design intent, the actual quality of your designs, maybe having a diverse background and skill set, really, you need to do something to set yourself apart and make yourself stand out against other potential design job candidates. None of this is to discourage you from getting into design. If you want to be a designer, anybody can get into the field. It's just that it's not like accounting or packaging engineering or something along those lines where there is a constant demand for those types of people. It's more of a competitive industry and you need to really be able to bring value to the table to get a job in the design field something that a company doesn't already have in its workforce. So the way that I got my first design job working at a mountain bike company, uh, basically what I'm doing is designing their website, doing content creation and general marketing strategy, uh, way more than a normal designer would be, but I'm the only one here, so I kind of need to take the reins on really everything at this point, but hopefully our design team will grow. So from my experience, the biggest thing that I did was grow a variety of skill sets. If you look at past videos on my channel, you'll see that I did a lot of video tutorials, a lot of photo tutorials, although my formal education background is in industrial design. So I learned all these other skills like photo and video in attempt to set myself apart from other designers in the industry. And honestly, that is completely what landed me this first job. He did not hire me to be a designer technically, although that is a large set of my responsibility at the job. He hired me to be a content creator and produce studio photos and lifestyle photos and videos for their content marketing strategy. Along with that, I'm also revamping their website and making sure it actually makes sense. Before, the website was a total mess and I'm basically rebuilding it from the ground up. Another thing that I think could help a lot of people get their first design job is improving communication skills. As a designer, a lot of times you will be communicating with people who don't necessarily have a classical training in design or have as much knowledge about design as you do. So you'll need to be able to communicate design ideas and design intent to people with no design background. To do this, you'll really need to have a good communication skill set. One way that I think is really helpful to do this is exactly what I'm doing right here, communicating with the camera and making sure I'm clearly articulating my words and clearly speaking to you guys, the audience. Another reason this is really helpful is that when you go back to edit your videos, you'll notice things that you do in your speech. Like say you repeat the same word a lot. You'll be able to pick up on that when you're editing your video and kind of pick apart your speech so that you'll be more effectively able to communicate your ideas to people. Another thing that creating these videos really helps with and why I would highly recommend it to anybody uh, really in any field, even outside of design, is that it helps you to speak with confidence. In order to make content interesting for YouTube, you need to be able to project your voice, to speak confidently to the camera, and speaking to a camera uh, and with an intent to post it on YouTube really kind of helps you develop your public speaking skills even though there's not actually a crowd right in front of you. A lot of times I actually find a camera more nerve wracking to speak in front of than an actual crowd because there's no way to read people's faces and see how the crowd is responding to what you're saying. So I would highly recommend to designers especially who need to communicate ideas very eloquently and proficiently, but really anybody in any field that you should pick up a camera and speak to it and try to make some YouTube videos about whatever you really want. It's just like learning how to speak to an audience or in this case, a camera. So next time you get up in front of some people, you'll be able to more confidently speak about your work and with more articulation in your voice and tone and things along those lines. Speaking of articulation, one of the biggest things you'll need to do as a designer to get a job is to be able to articulate your design choices. Like I said before, you're really going to be speaking mostly to people who don't have an understanding of design previously. So you'll need to be able to articulate your design decisions, whether it's putting an icon in whatever location you decided to put it or the actual shape of the icon itself, you'll need to be able to explain why you're doing things and why you're making things look the way that they are. As designers, we all know how to make things look great, but it's really explaining to people why they look great and why you provide value to a company that is kind of going to set you apart. 
The next thing that I think really helps people get their foot in the door in a lot of places is have a very good, obviously, and targeted portfolio. A portfolio is really gonna be kind of your resume in terms of what employers are going to be looking at in your design history. Portfolio is gonna show all of your best work and designs in a small condensed space, usually on a website. While it's important to have your best work, I also think it's highly important to have a targeted portfolio and only put work in your portfolio that you want to get jobs for. So say you want to go down the UX and UI route, you wouldn't want to have a bunch of logo designs that you've done, even if they're really great work, you might want to steer away from putting those in your portfolio if you're looking for a UX and UI job and instead put in applications you've designed. Maybe if you really like designing logos as well, you could create some branding to back up the app that you designed, but it's important to put work in your portfolio that you want to get in the future. So for me personally, I had a lot of bike projects in there. I wanted to work for a bike company and I made a lot of bike related projects, whether it was making videos of my friends who are professional bike riders and putting those in my portfolio or developing bike related designs. Uh, I've designed a bunch of different bicycles and I really think that's why I got this job at this bike company. While portfolios are important, I still think that the biggest thing that you can do to get yourself a design job is to network. Networking can occur from talking to family and family friends and your immediate network, which is always great because then you already have like a good connection point to start off with. But it can also happen through online platforms like LinkedIn. I personally use LinkedIn a lot and although it didn't actually land me the job that I'm at now, I have developed a lot of relationships with people who could be potential employers in the future. Now, when you are networking through LinkedIn, it's best to not just cold call people and say, hey, do you have a job? Like, can you give me some work? Things along those lines. Instead, I like to think that it's better to start off by reaching out to people and say, hey, I'm a new designer. You know, I'm looking for some information on the field that you, as whoever you're reaching out to, are obviously successful in. And, you know, you start off just asking him some questions building a rapport, building a relationship with a person. And it's really just about establishing connections. Maybe it's not going to get you a job right away, but it's going to get your name noticed in the industry. Design is a very, very tight knit group of people. And if your name starts getting passed around as, hey, this guy's really interested in this field and he's asking a lot of questions and looking to build his network, that's quickly going to get passed around to a lot of people and could potentially someday land you a job. Networking is probably one of the most crucial things that you'll be doing as a designer, especially when you're first getting your foot in the door in the industry. Now, I've only been a designer for a few months full time, but what I've heard is that once you get that first job, the jobs after that kind of come a little bit easier. A lot of the jobs that you'll see on LinkedIn are requiring one to three years of experience prior to getting the job. So it's like, how do you get any experience if you don't have any experience and all the jobs that you could get are requiring experience? I would advise to just ignore those one to three year experience required and apply for jobs that you think you are capable of doing, regardless of them having one to three years experience required. So in short, the biggest thing you need to remember is that design is a super competitive and desired industry to be a part of. So you really need to do something to set yourself apart whether it is having a diverse background in terms of skill set, whether it's being able to clearly articulate your ideas to non-designers or potential employers, having an excellent portfolio and preferably a targeted portfolio, be able to speak confidently about your work and design decisions, and always be networking. Always network, always be reaching out to people, always be establishing new relationships in the industry so that you can get your name out there for for potential future jobs. All right, thanks for watching this video, guys. I appreciate any of you who have made it this far. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like below or even a comment if you feel so inclined for the YouTube algorithm, that would be very much appreciated. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Later.